And my name is Vicki McBride, and as the Future Church Board Vice Chair, it is my honor to introduce our other Father Louis Trevisan Award recipient, Dr. Phyllis Zagano. Before Future Church launched our So All Can Be at the Table campaign in 2002, sending over 13,000 postcards to the Vatican calling for women deacons, before our Women Deacons Why Not Now campaign in the 2010s, before the International Union of Superiors General asked Pope Francis to study women deacons, before those study commissions convened, before we hosted our Women Deacons retreats in 2016 and 2017, before we launched Deacon Chat in 2017 with the voice of the faithful, and the Association of U.S. Catholic Priests, and before additional voices began calling for the discernment of women deacons throughout the Synod on Synodality, Dr. Phyllis Zagano was laying the groundwork, the foundations of this movement, conducting the research, writing the articles and books, and giving presentations about the reality of women deacons in the history of our church. In short, it is hard to say just where the movement for the restoration of women deacons would be without Dr. Zagano's tireless commitment to the topic. And over the years, Future Church has been proud to count Dr. Zagano as a friend and partner in our work for women deacons, presenting for us numerous times, collaborating with us on our educational packets, and advising us on many of our advocacy efforts. Dr. Zagano is Senior Research Associate in Residence and Adjunct Professor of Religion at Hofstra University. She holds a BA from Marymount College, Terrytown, New York, her PhD from the State University of New York at Stony Brook, and three master's degrees in Communications, Boston University, Literature, Long Island University, and Theology, St. John's University. She is the author or editor of several dozens of books in religious studies, including her many volumes on women deacons. Her latest book, Just Church, Catholic Social Teaching, Synodality, and Women, was published by Paulist Press in February this year. Her award-winning column is nationally syndicated and runs in the National Catholic Reporter and in other journals around the world. She has published hundreds of articles and reviews in popular, popular reference journals. On August 2nd, 2016, Pope Francis appointed her to the Papal Commission for the Study of Women in the Diaconate, which convened in Rome that November. Tonight, on behalf of the Future Church Board, staff, and community, it is my privilege to present you, Dr. Zagano, with our 2023 Father Louis Trevisan Award in recognition of and immense gratitude for your groundbreaking work researching the history of, promoting discussion and discernment about, and advancing the cause for women in the diaconate. Please join me in welcoming, congratulating, and thanking Dr. Phyllis Zagano. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm just thank you very much. I'm I'm so happy to receive this award from from an organization founded by the community of Saint Malachi, with Chris and and Father Louis. Saint Malachi. Um, a 12th century Irish saint. Now there are many, many stories about St. Malachi. As with any Irish saint, actually some of them are true, uh, but, it, but it is known that while he was a bishop, he tried to reform a few things, especially in the practices of confession, confirmation and marriage. He, he was also known for his care for the poor. It's also said he planted apple trees throughout Ireland during a time of famine. Now, what we know about him comes to us from St. Bernard of Clairvaux, 
who affirms that Malachi was a great traveler. In fact, Malachi died on November 2nd, 1148 at Clairvaux, where he's buried. All in all, he, he, he was just trying to get the church back on track. You know, I, I think that's what future church has been doing since 1990. Some years ago, I was talking to Russ Petrus at a UISG meeting and, oh no, it wasn't UISG, it was LS, uh, LCWR. And I said it would be good if Future Church began to put out materials about women in the diaconate. And he said, as you heard, we can do that. And so he did, so you have, and I still have mine. Um, before that, actually, I spoke at a Future Church Mary Magdalene uh, celebration somewhere in Ohio. I don't remember when it was. There, there were pickets outside when, when Chris and I drove up. We went inside and I went out to find out what they were picketing about. They told me, Christine Schenk in Future Church. And to make matters worse, they said, they told me Phyllis Sagano was going to speak in there today. Of course, I was horrified. Anyway, I don't belong to Future Church. I don't belong to any organization beyond a few academic societies. That is on the advice of Christine Schenk, who, who told me that I would be better off not to be labeled with one or another cause. Well, that sort of worked. Um, anyway, they've asked me to talk a little bit about the Synod and the Diaconate this evening. You know, Overall, the Synod Synthesis Report seems very positive toward increasing the involvement of non-ordained persons, including and especially women, in church management and decision-making, but, but it doesn't really move the question of women in ministry forward. The, the two sections on women in the diaconate, as has been reported, received the greatest number of negative votes. They still received a two-thirds majority vote. Now, it's possible. It's possible that for some negative voters, the paragraphs were unacceptable because they did not support women deacons. It's also possible that some voters abstained by not voting at all because there was no possibility to abstain. But the paragraphs, I think, most generally, most probably reflected the general conversation in the aula. You see, the, the first paragraph restates the basics of the discussion. Persons accepting women deacons see the move as a restoration of tradition and an acceptance of the recognition of the dignity of women. Persons not accepting women deacons see the move as a break with tradition and what they term as, quote, an expression of dangerous anthropological confusion. I'll read you the paragraph exactly as it was written. Different positions have been expressed regarding women's access to diaconal ministry. Some consider that this step would be unacceptable as it would be in discontinuity with tradition. That's with a big T. For others, however, granting women access to the diaconate would restore a practice of the early church. Still others discern it as an appropriate and necessary response to the signs of the times, faithful to tradition and one that would find an echo in the hearts of many who seek renewed vitality and energy in the church. Some express concern that the request speaks of a worrying anthropological confusion, which if granted would marry the church to the spirit of the age. Now the vote passed 277 for and 69 against. That's a total of 346 persons voting and the Pope voted. Now, the proposal therefore was to re review previous studies and continue the research on the topic. Now, given that there have been at least four studies in modern times, including one with positive findings in 1997 that was not promulgated, the church may be becoming weary of what appears to be another postponement. I'll, I'll read the next paragraph. It's not the next paragraph, but it's the, the germane one. And I quote, theological and pastoral research on the access of women to the diaconate should be continued, benefiting from consideration of the results of the commissions specially established by the Holy Father and from the theological, historical, and exegetical research already undertaken. If possible, 
the results of this research should be presented at the next session of the assembly. And that vote passed 279 for 67 against with a total of 346 again. I can tell you it seems an insurmountable task to get a general agreement on the facts of history, anthropology and theology on the question of women deacons such that the whole church would ask for the restoration of women to the ordained diaconate. But I also believe if there's evidence that women cannot be restored to the ordained diaconate, the answer should be given clearly and without delay. Having said that, I truly appreciate the way Pope Francis has brought this issue so far and relatively speaking so fast. The synod sought points of convergence and repeatedly around the world, people have asked for women to be restored to the ordained diaconate. Now, I happen to think that would be a good thing. Uh, as you've heard, I've been thinking about that for many years now. Um, I really, really am grateful for your recognizing my work and I'm happy to have the opportunity to talk more with you about it. But right now, thank you. Thank you so much for the award. Thank you for Future Church for what you have done and what you are doing. And thank you all for listening. <laughs>